Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'll be reviewing this video which is about a couple and they plan to retire by age of 35. I know you will be thinking, how can I actually retire early? How can I achieve financial independence, retire early? And definitely this video, which is actually, actually done by Exploring Alternatives, is definitely going to help you address that question that you may have. Look for this title, Extreme Frugal Minimalist Plan to Retire by Age of 35. And without further ado, let's dive on to it. So basically, about seven and a half years ago, when we decided to start pursuing early retirement, we figured out a system involving lowering our system? expenses a lot. Okay. Um, lowering so expenses. Our savings rate really high, up to about 16, 65%. And just investing that. And then just over time, the money just kind of accumulates. And now at this point, we're probably about two to three years away from having just enough in investments that we don't need to work any. Okay, let's pause it here. I've actually checked if you are saving 65% of your income and according to the 4% rule whereby your expenses to retire with financial freedom you just need 25 times of your expenses then when you are able to save 65% of your income you can definitely achieve financial freedom in 10 years that is with a compounding growth of a portfolio of 6% it's actually doable and like what she mentioned she's actually been saving for 7 years and they are a few years away, so that's actually very true. So let's move on further. Anymore? So at this point, we just said, you know, we're nearing the end of the journey we started. But whatever retirement means to us is being able to retire at a relatively early age, but still have enough money to be able to support ourselves through, you know, our investment income without, without needing to work. We've... Okay, I think that's a good definition. I wonder what's your motivation to reach financial freedom also but I think he's given a very good answer which is to not have the stress of working to pay off your bills and you know in this day of age, in this day and age job security is so low so reaching financial independence is actually a very important objective and I hope you get motivated by some of his suggestions and his definition of financial freedom you might work if you want but we wouldn't be forced to work in order to you know, pay for our bills and such. Okay. The biggest things we do is make our large expenses quite a bit lower. We rent a very cheap apartment. We don't have a car. I do all our cooking from scratch. I do bulk meal prep. Um, yeah, just a lot of little things. And generally, you know, we're very minimalist. We don't really buy things. There are all these categories for a lot of people that just don't exist for us. I mean, we don't have a restaurant budget. We don't have an alcohol budget. We don't... Okay, let's pause it over here. I think she has given a few ways that they have been saving, something that you can consider adopting. The first she mentioned was about renting a place that's very cheap. That is in Canadian context, in, in Asian context, in Singapore's context. The, the, the similar thing to look out for is it, buy a place whereby the mortgage is not too significant, that is not too much of a burden for you. The second thing she mentioned is she does not have a car budget, and that's very true in Singapore. Cars easily cost a thousand each month to anyone. And the third point is that she doesn't have a restaurant budget. I think I think that's a bit that's a bit extreme because eating in a restaurant is actually not that ex not that expensive. There's apps that can save you on your restaurant budget, such as Entertainer, such as Burper Beyond. And I'm on these apps, and I'll leave a link below so that you can look for them yourself if you're not really saving money on your restaurant meals through these apps. So let's move on a bit further. Um, we don't have a car budget. We don't like none of those things are even. I mean, most of those categories are zero dollars spent in those categories. Okay, so indeed she's really spending very little, and some of the car expenditure has been mentioned by her already. Well, those are the main people that work for. Usually our combined income is around 80,000 a year. We okay, 80,000 combined income. About 9,500 on travel, about 9,500 on housing, and about 2,500 to 3,000 on food per year. Okay, this is the second time I'm watching this video and I'm still astounded by how much they actually allocate towards travel, which is as you, have, as you are looking over here, 9,500 a year. I travel with my wife and my child and I, I can safely say we spend actually less than that uh, very comfortably and if I'm not wrong 9,500 of their total income of 80,000 that's about 12% 12% that they allocate towards traveling and that's quite significant because when I did a survey most actually spend between 5 to 
all their annual income on travels. Now, uh, how much you spend on your travel really depends on you, but straight off, I think that's something that they can look to cut down and uh, maybe they'll elaborate further in the video on what they actually spend on, you know, on their travels. For the two of us. To keep our costs down for groceries, I think um, it's really just a matter of cooking everything from scratch. You know, okay, they do a lot of cooking. Meals or things like that. But just actually cooking and baking everything from scratch, um, it, it drives the cost way down. We spend less than $300 a month on food for the two of us. You know, and that's no trouble because we shop. Okay, I think $300 is really too frugal. You know, good nutrition is very important. Uh, you don't get to financial freedom and yet be unhealthy when you reach that. So, uh, I spend actually significantly more on food. I buy golden kiwis for vitamin C and each box of four is easily $6. I buy chocolates, dark chocolate because dark chocolate is known for antioxidants. Uh, I buy salmon fish, cod fish for my son and each piece is easily $10. So, I think $300 is way too little. You. If you are thinking of cutting down your food, maybe that's not the best idea because again, you want to get the financial freedom, being healthy and investing in your own body and health. It's very important. Now let's move a bit further. Well, we take uh, two big like international vacations a year, usually one in the summer and one in the winter. And then we do a few like little trips to like local places uh, here and there. Okay, so this is where the 9,500 actually goes. Two major international trips. Uh, and on top of that, some local trips. No wonder they, they are spending so much in terms of travel. They probably spend a large part, of, I mean a good 2-3 months easily overseas. And um, so it's let's listen really on. Enjoy. You're going to new countries, new cultures, trying new experiences, trying new food. I think every trip we do is really just, there's something about that that's inspiration towards the, you know, early retirement because it's like, it's a taste of it. We spend close to $10,000 a year on travel, so it's not really like we do a budget thing on it. A lot of it is just we do the same kind of stuff when we travel that we do at home. We tend to go to the grocery store, get ingredients and cook. When we travel, we tend to... Okay, let's pause it there. I think she's covered a few things. In their journey towards financial freedom, they have actually set these milestones on traveling and I think that's motivating them to persevere in that journey. Maybe that's a great tip for you if you are looking to embark on one yourself. And uh, some things she mentioned also, that they're also very frugal when it comes to their overseas trips. That means they are probably paying a lot in hotels, the, the bulk of it, and airfares, and they're not actually spending a lot more while they're there. So I think being frugal is a, a, a mindset that invades every single decision that you make. And if you're looking to spend a bit less, it has to be consistent. Look to cut down everything in terms of your daily living, food, transport. Uh, because as they have shared also, when they travel, they're also very frugal. So I think that is a very consistent message. Now let's move on a bit further. But we would just walk a bike more. And we really got serious about it once we realized early retirement was even a possibility, which was about seven years ago. So we've been sort of taking it more seriously and working on it, um, you know, and really focusing on investing a lot and getting our having our high savings rate and making progress um, just for about seven and a half years now. Okay, so if they've been earning about 80000 each year and like what she suggested, they're saving about 65%. And if they've been doing that for seven years with a 6% uh, investment return, for example, their portfolio should be about $600,000 already. Uh, I think that's a good benchmark. Look to where you are right now to, to mirror against this journey. I think that's a good learning point. Yeah. When we first started, um, Sel had a small net worth. He was just finishing up school. I had about $7,000 of debt. I did one year of post-secondary before deciding I didn't want to do any more of that. But that was gone really quickly. Okay, no more debt, we no more debt. We index funds. We just have a very simple portfolio through a robo-advisor. When we get paid, we deposit money, it's dealt with, and we don't have to think about Okay, I'll pause it there. I think this is a great uh, approach. Uh, no debt, uh, they're investing into index funds, very diversified. She mentioned she's investing in a robo portfolio in Canada. I think Betterment is, is big. So perhaps they have been investing this 600000 into that portfolio. 
And uh, let's hear a bit further on what, what, their, what their experiences. Found it and just kind of grows in the background. So that, you know, once a year we get our tax slips and final taxes, and that's, that's the extent of what we have to do with our investments. Okay, I'll pause it right there. I, I think, I think this, this mindset needs a bit of thinking to it. She mentioned extent to what they do only. Let me ask you this question. If you, if you want to learn martial arts, and if you just read from a book, just read from a book when you're trying to learn martial arts. You're not really, uh, you're not looking to spar, you're not looking to get advice ongoingly on how to improve. You're only looking, reading a book to learn martial arts. How good a martial art artist will you really be? So again, when, when, if you want to be financially free, you need to really know money. You need to know investments, at least the basics of it, and have that comfort, have, have, have that mindset that you are looking, you are, you are willing to look at it all the time and not just leave it to any advisor, be it a robot advisor or a financial advisor because no platform or no advisor is going to be a permanent solution for 40 or 50 years. So that's my suggestion. Uh, having that mindset of, oh, that's, that's all that we do, it's, it's actually quite dangerous. But we don't really do any kind of, yeah, like tricks or psychological stuff to spend less. We just really look at our spending as a whole and sort of decide how we feel about that. And it's either, we're either happy with this amount or we're not, and if we're not, we would just spend less. Okay, I think that's a great sharing and it's a great ending point. They actually have a plan, and every time they look at their budgets, and if it's getting way out of hand, they are, they'll, they'll be skating it back. So the main learning point from today is have a plan. If you are serious about financial freedom, have a plan on how to get there. If it's 10 years, invest well and save up 65% of your income. This is a proven story that can work. And if you have any comments, leave them in the sections below. And also do like this video because it helps YouTube know that this is good content and that more people should see. So without, without uh, debating too far further, I'll, I'll leave you to watch the further videos yourself. I'll leave the link below so you can continue watching on. I'll see you in a future video. Take care and goodbye.